it's Alberto Lombardi. Welcome to my channel. Today we will talk about one of my favorite riffs from one of my favorite songs from one of my favorite artists of all time. The song is Fragile, the artist is Sting. I used to open for Krusty in 69. In fact, he fired me as I recall. <laughs> <laughs> Sting. I am a huge Sting fan. I always love this work, especially his solo work. I like it because he is so intelligent harmonically, melodically and rhythmically that really fascinates me. The song was on this record that came out in 1987 that was called Nothing Like the Sun. The record was brilliant, was Sting's second solo album and uh, actually Sting wrote this riff by himself and performed it on the record. He didn't collaborate with Dominic Miller, his actual guitar player, because they started working together on The Soul Cages, the next album. There is a bunch of great guitar players, guests on this record, from Eric Clapton to Hiram Bullock to Mark Knopfler, but none of them played this riff. Sting himself did, and that makes it even more special because it's not only a guitar riff, it's actually a real piece of music composition. As I was saying, this riff is really easy, but at the same time full of details that if you want to sound like Sting, you have to get precisely right. Nobody can sound like Sting, but if you want to get close. If you're enjoying this video, please leave a comment, hit the like button so YouTube will know that this video is worth sharing, and also subscribe if you haven't and ring the bell. Let's start. The entire guitar part is based on two devices, bass notes and double stops. So we have this double stops, which is basically just two notes together, played on the D string and the B string. So we just move this around and we add the bass notes. Sometimes Stings use little bars instead of two fingers. Which you can do as well. This is the first position. We hit the D string at the 12th fret with our third finger and with the pinky we get the B string at the same fret, the 12th fret. Then we have this double stops. We move the same thing to the 10th fret and then we do this at the 8th fret, we're staying at the 8th fret like on an E minor, but we're just playing these two notes, and the bass is E. So this is the first notes that we want to play. Now let's get to the rhythm, which is the most important part. The first thing we do is we play the first three notes together. Then we move down to the 10th fret and we arpeggiate the three notes separately. So then what we want to do is to play just the double stop, letting possibly the bass ringing. We play these two double stops, the third and the first one, but at the first time we play the two notes together. And the second time we just play the upper note, so it's... And this is really interesting because it changes a lot the rhythm flowing of the riff. And gives a lot more attention to the upper note on the upbeat of the last segment of the phrase. It's like rhythmically accented. If you play the both notes together, it's not the same. One thing that I was noticing is that Sting does something that is a little unorthodox and it's different from what Dominic Miller, his guitar player, does. When he gets to this double stop here, he actually plays it with the thumb of his right hand and the third finger. So it switches from playing the bass with the thumb to playing this note on the D string and this changes the sound a little bit. 
but it's part of the sound that Sting has. Let me play it for you. Can you tell the difference between this and this other version? It's a different sound. And what Dominic Miller does, he adds a bass, so instead of going, he goes, let me play it slow for you. One, two, three, four. Even slower, one, two, three, four. Then we move to the second chord, which is an A minor. Same rhythm, different notes, but we have the same pattern with the right hand and the left hand. This time around, the three positions are this. First one, second one, third one, and last one. But again, Sting does that little thing with the right hand when he changes to the thumb. So if we put them together, this first two part, we got this. And you might notice that the first time around the E bass note is on the down bit together with the other notes. When we go to the A, he starts playing the bass an eighth note before. Bah. So this is the down bit, but the A comes before that. Then we move to the next chord, which is a B chord of some sort. It's actually a B in the bass, and we have these double stops that run on top of it. So the positions are this one, B, B, G. Then we bar. Then we skip the bass. It doesn't play any bass in the spot. And it does bar these two chords, but you can actually use two fingers instead, it's up to you. Whatever is more comfortable for you. Then we go here, and we do da. Always the bass comes first, then we arpeggiate. Then we play this third double stop here. So the three positions are this one, this one, and this one. Let me put it all together until here and play it at half the tempo. One, two, three, four. Then he just repeats the verse again with a little different ending, but it also starts a little different. After this last beat here, he just repeats, adds actually, this little part right before starting again. And here it changes from time to time, he puts the bass right before the beat or sometimes he puts it on the beat. Or... So everything is heavily influenced from Latin music. If I play it faster... You can tell it's really heavily influenced by Latin American music. The second time around, the verse ends like this, instead of... He 
it's a little unclear if they play this because if they do this F sharp note doesn't come across really clear not sure you can put it in if you want so we have the first time the second time then we move to the chorus and we are at the 8th fret and we get C, C and A you can also rest your second finger on the E note here on the G string but Sting doesn't play it it's actually a C sixth but what you hear is just which is kind of a clearer chord the notes are more intelligible then what you want to do is to raise the pinky and bar with the first finger and the rhythm goes like this three four then we move to the next position which is this one he does the same thing but this time he releases both fingers and keeps a bar on the seventh fret So let me play these two chords together very slow. One, two, three, four. So the final part of the chorus, it's a little tricky because of the way he alternates the note, but it's very important because it gives the riff a lot of movement. So it goes like this, three, four. As you see, it's a little different the first and the second time. So let's break it up. First time we go down, we do so all the notes together, we arpeggiate them. Last time when we get here, we play the low E and the G note at the same time and then we delay the high E play it very slow it sounds like this then we move on and we do this other thing and we do play both the double stops at the same time second time that we reach this E minor position here, this double stop, we actually play it all at once to prepare for what's coming next. So this whole part together, let me play it slow for you. One, two, three, four. Then two chords here, these two double stops, come on the upbeat, so it's really Latin feeling to prepare for the next chord. Let me play it for you. So after we're here, we do a bass and then these two double stops. And let me put it all together very slow again. Three, four. Since the rhythm of this thing is so important, 
The last thing that I want to do is to play the riff very slow with a click so you can see and hear all the notes where they are on the beat, which is the most important thing of this whole riff. Let me do that. One, two, two. So don't forget to hit the like button and to leave a comment that really helps YouTube understand this is a good video and if you haven't subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Alberto Lombardi. Ciao. Or he might just Either way is fine. Ma l'ho detta sta cosa all'inizio. L'ho detta. Bene, finito. Pausa e poi facciamo l'altro.